As the green stagecoach rolled over the crest of yet another hill, Jay was finally welcomed with his first view of cessation. It was an impressively large town from a distance. They were approaching from the east, which it seemed most of the respectable sorts had built proper homes upon. A few domiciles they considered mansions by all rights, but mostly all were small single-floor cabins. In the center was a main thoroughfare and business district of the town as well as a large industrial mining operation on the southwest corner of this bustling downtown area. To the south, west, and north of town were tents. Rows and rows upon rows of tents. Small, large, some networked together to form larger complexes. This was the sign of the booming gold rush within the Erie Valley. It was like nothing Jay had ever laid eyes upon in his young life. Kyle was asleep in his seat, missing out on a spectacular view as it quickly disappeared behind the crest of yet another hill on the approach to town. Unsurprisingly, the old hotel line stopped right outside a pink and yellow two-story building downtown with just the word HOTEL placed upon it in ornate gold-flaked paint that caught the sun. The building sat next to a dive bar named the Last Nickel Saloon. The building was painted a bright red, from what Jay could see, there were four establishments for drinking in town. The Old Hotel, plus the Last Nickel on the south side of town, with the Abuelo Inn just across from these two on the western side of the main boulevard, and a run-down and weathered old watering hole on the same side of the street, but at the far northern end called the Old Owl Tavern. On the east side of the main street was a large white single-story building accented in red, with a sign that read, Mortem Theatre. Jay was unsure if such a place would serve liquor, as it seemed that theaters were a coin toss as to being proper places of thespian persuasion, or simply saloons with dancing girls in a stage. Judging by the look of it, his guess was on it being a place to see a proper production, not dancing girls. Hey, you two. Jay's attention was suddenly broken by the gruff shout of a man standing at the corner in front of the Abuelo Inn. A mustached man in a gray suit. The tip of a brown leather holster peeked out from under his jacket. A man in a gray brown suit and top hat stood next to him. He too was armed. They wore no badges or gave signs of being law. You idiots were supposed to come in on the red stage. What can't take directions? The mustached man barked. Kyle tensed. A veteran from the Plains Wars, he was very adept at knowing real trouble. Jay watched Kyle a moment. The man's eyes darted between the two strangers. Jay also tensed. Though at only nineteen, Jay wasn't experienced in the ways of violence quite like Kyle was. I believe you got us mistaken for someone else, Jay called back. We're new to these parts. The two men stepped closer, stopped about twelve paces from Jay and Kyle. Their eyes narrowed. It was the man in the top hat that answered next. We expected new miners to be arriving all day today. Y'all weren't sent by Mr. Lars? Never known a man by that name, Kyle replied. The boy speaks truth. We ain't miners. Got business in town that don't got nothing to do with gold. Y'all expect us to believe that everyone comes here for the gold. Afraid we'll steal your claim? Every damn claim produces in this valley. Y'all got nothing to fear. Mustache Man said then. Ain't none of your business what we're in town for, stranger. We want no trouble. Ain't gonna cause none either, Jay replied. We work for Silas Marsh, the gold magnate, and one of the very founders of this town. It is our business to know yours. You will have trouble should you choose not to be sociable forthwith. The mustached man reached into his coat and grabbed the handle of his revolver. As he pulled free... Kyle was like a flash of lightning. His colt was in his hand, aimed, cocked, and fired, as if all at once. A woman screamed. The busy foot traffic froze in place, all eyes upon the sudden outburst of violence. Mustache stood there, his gun out and half raised. He gave a gurgled choke as blood seeped through his clenched teeth and flowed down onto his fine shirt. He collapsed into the dusty street, his final death rattle sounding out. Top Hat stared in awe for a moment. Then he charged. You dumb sons of bitches! 
He went for Kyle, but Jay cross-tackled him in a perfect intercept. The bigger man didn't go down, though. He grabbed Jay by the throat, started to squeeze. Then the barrel of Kyle's revolver shoved into the side of Top Hat's head and fired. He went slack in an instant and collapsed in a heap. Jay coughed, took a breath, and realized that the streets had cleared out. Then he realized why. Five men were walking up the main street. They too wore the clothes of townsfolk, but the glint of metal badges and the sunlight spoke as to whom was approaching. The sheriff, or perhaps Marshall and his deputies. A man in a pinstriped suit leading the pack stopped a few paces short of the scene. Kyle dropped his gun. The man nodded approvingly. Least you got more sense than these two ever did, the pinstriped man said. You there, young man. You didn't draw iron, but I'd kindly ask you to keep your hands up and visible. Yes, sir, Jay said. Now there's a couple of words rarely spoken to me. Gentlemen, I am Sheriff Silas Dawson. Seeing as how you're the only two alive, and given I am familiar with the deceased, my first question is not what happened, but instead, are you boys all right? Jay and Kyle stood there, slightly dumbfounded. Then Jay spoke. We're fine, Sheriff. Shook up, but fine. Kyle simply nodded. All right, boys. One of my deputies says he saw what happened, or at least how it began. Our friend Lewis drew on you. And you drew faster. That sound right? The duo from Ohio nodded. Do tell your story, came a booming, deep voice from the right side of the whole group. Jay turned to see a man in a white hat and duster, flanked by three identical men with long, drooping mustaches. They, too, wore badges and dark black suits and large, wide-brim hats. But they were all different from the sheriff's. An identical scent of triplets, apparently. They weren't Marshall's badges on their coats, either. These were gold-plated, circular in shape, no star symbol. Judge Dunlap, the sheriff called. This is a rather open and shut case of self-defense. Neither you nor your bailiffs are needed here. Nonsense, Dawson. So rarely ever am I called to court as it is in this town. Perhaps at best I be the judge of what is and isn't an open and shut case. Judge Dunlap looked over the two Ohioans. Tell me, sirs, wouldn't have to be from the Toledo area, would you? The judge smiled. <laughs> yes, sir, Jay said. We're about a day's ride south of there. I knew it. You've the particular pronunciation style from that part of Ohio, drawn out A's and R's, common amongst the most of the Buckeye State's alumni. That's a heck of an ear you got, Judge. I'm a man who has traveled this great country and most of the world extensively. Now, do tell me what occurred here. And so, Jay did. Told it as it happened. No embellishment or lie to be found amongst it. Capital. Simply capital, son, the judge chuckled. Not too late for a youngster like yourself to become a lawyer, you know. Though I'd hate to spoil that sense of truth you've got. Well, Sheriff, I am satisfied. You two Buckeyes stay wary, hmm? I'll send a wire to Mr. Marsh to ensure that no reprisals are made. Uh, until you hear from either me or my bailiffs, I advise you two to remain scarce. The old hotel should do you both nicely. I'll see to the expenses of your meals and board until I can be sure of your safety. Sheriff Dawson looked annoyed. The judge was offering services that seemed more to be within his purview. However, he remained silent. Jay and Kyle both did not miss this, though. Still, free room and meals for a day or two sounded fine. So they agreed. Capital. Tell Miss Rockster at the front desk of our arrangement and forward me the bill. On you go, boys. As Jay and Kyle left as ordered, the sheriff approached the judge. The two seemed to be having a low-spoken argument. However, it went unheard. Jay gave one last look to the men Kyle had just killed as the deputies and the bailiffs started to drag them away. A most heartfelt thank you to my patrons and subscribers. I wouldn't be able to do this without y'all. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. I have a Patreon. It's in the description of the video. You can also find my Twitter and my Discord server there if you would like to join the community and help this channel grow. I hope you enjoyed this story, and I will see you 
in the next one. Thanks again, everyone.